Hi, Josh here, and you're watching 610 Bob Builds, where I walk you through some of my creations. In this episode, we'll be going over the construction and installation of the sign manifold, also known as the return manifold, for my water cooled server rack. The return manifold is made out of 3 quarter inch copper. On top is an air bleeder. This helps to remove trapped air in the coolant. The 3 quarter inch copper tees go into a sweat to 3 quarter inch NPT threaded adapter which goes onto a 3 quarter inch ball valve. The ball valve allows me to isolate each server. This way I can disconnect the server while the pump is still running. I also have all the handles to the ball valves removed so that it can fit into the side of the server rack. If I need to use a ball valve, I simply grab a handle and place it onto the ball valve stem. The ball valve goes into a 3 quarter inch NPT to half inch flare, which leads into a half inch T. A thermal resistor goes here to monitor the water coming out of each server. The T goes into another half inch flare, which goes into a half inch flare to a half inch barbed fitting. I wanted to go from a barred fitting to a flare so that I could disconnect a computer without cutting the tube beam. The ball valve allows me to close the circuit. It's all about uptime, people. I could have gone from a 3 quarter inch NPT to 3 8 sweat, but I didn't realize that a half inch OD copper is the same as 3 8 copper. Why can't we standardize pipe and tubing measurements? Here I am installing the ball valves onto the manifold. To keep the threads leak free, I apply dope, then tape, then more dope. I threw this video in so that the plumbers among us can check my work. Plumbers, don't forget to leave my grade in the comments. I made a panel that will span between the two pillars in my rack. It will be held in place using the same cage nuts that my servers use. Its purpose is to not only hold the manifold in place, but to protect the servers. If there was a leak, or I was just disconnecting a server, the panel would prevent water from being sprayed onto the servers. It is made out of 24 gauge galvanized sheet metal. It has three flanges, two on the side for mounting, and one on the bottom to add rigidity. For mounting of the panel, I drilled oversized holes to give me a lot of wiggle room. I also used a caliper to mark out the holes, mainly because it is easier to hold than a tape measure. When I drilled the holes, I used a block of wood underneath the metal. This gives a cleaner hole because the drill isn't ramming through the steel. Along with the return manifold, I have hard copper lines that go from the supply manifold to the inputs on the return manifold. I did this so that the tubing that goes from the computer all leads to the same place. I made it out of copper because it's less likely to kink, and it won't turn into a complete mess. These supply lines have to be twisted around the rack, which makes it a bit difficult to make. That is why I have everything set up. Basically what I am doing is eyeing up where the copper has to go, then bend the copper and hope it fits. Please note the scotch tape holding the copper in place. With the supply lines made, it's time to flare them. Like the return manifold, I wanted the barbed fittings to be easily removed. I flare both ends using a flare block, remembering to put the flare nut on first. Then I mount the lines using conduit straps. Now it's time to install the side manifold. These pillars that I am mounting the back plate to have holes for square cage nuts. So it is just a matter of inserting the cage nuts and screwing the panel in place. Then I install the supply lines using conduit straps. Then I mount the return manifold using split ring hangers. And the sign manifold, also known as the return manifold, is done. Be sure to check out the other videos in my water cooled server rack series. Yeah, that's it. Water cooled server rack series. Also, leave a comment if you ever made a flare and forgot to put the flare nut on first. That way, I know I'm not alone.